praise the Lord. And greetings in the awesome and matchless name of Jesus. His name is worthy to be praised. He deserves all honor. He deserves all the glory. Amen. For he is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures through all generations. We thank God for this hymn. Allowing us to assemble ourselves together one more time. And you all that are watching on Facebook, YouTube, wherever you're watching through the live stream, we pray that God will just, just, just strengthen you and keep you, not only you individually, but your families also. Amen. And I pray uh, for God's continuance. Amen. Deliverance. And even what he's doing and how he's continuing to bring us through. Amen. God is an awesome God. And we honor him. We praise him for, for everything. Everything. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. So I pray that you will continue to, to lift up the name of Jesus. And continue to magnify him. Amen. Don't wait till the battle is over, but you gotta give God praise. You gotta, you gotta thank him, amen, and exalt him, for he's worthy of all the praises. I want to uh tonight I want to kind of uh we've been talking about the uh the reward for Obedience, and I want to look at it again one more time tonight, and then we'll move. I'll look at something else as the Lord lead. Amen. I want to look back at the gospel according to Saint John. Amen. And then we're going to go into Genesis. Amen. And kind of work our way back. Amen. Back to uh, to. Uh, to the Gospels. Amen. To the Gospel. So. In the Gospel according to St. John. The 10th chapter. The 10th chapter. John's writing. About the deity. The divine nature. The divine nature of God. So we're just so grateful. It's the divine nature, the deity, the divinity. Amen. The 10th verse reads, the thief cometh not but for to steal Number one, what he's trying to do to you. And he's trying to steal from you. And number two, he's trying to kill you, the thief. Speaking of the adversary. And not only is he going to try to steal, kill, but he also wants to destroy. He wants to destroy you. And here Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And I want to talk about the reward for obedience is abundant life. God bless your word. Give us understanding, revelation. Unfold and reveal. God, we thank you for not only who you are, but especially for what you are in our lives. Bless those that are watching. Bless them and their families. Keep them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. We worship you. Hallelujah. In the beauty of holiness, we adore you, God. My God, we glorify you. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. I am come that they might have life after, after seeing what the thief wants to do. It's good to know. 
It is good to know what the adversary is trying to do to you. Because when you know what he's trying to do to you, then you will strategically prepare yourself. Amen. Through, through by the, 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 the leading and the guidance according to the Holy Spirit and, his, and being instructed by God's word. You were strategic. You would. I know, especially when you when you know somebody's out to get you, and you know somebody's out to trying to. Steal. If, if 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 you know somebody going 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 steal, and you know that they're going to try to break into your house or try to break into your car and do steal something for you, you're going to be waiting, and you're going to be ready for them. And so, and then especially if you know they're trying to kill you and trying to destroy you, this is what the thief is trying to do. He comes not for but to steal, kill, and to destroy. Right there by knowing those three attacks and what he wants to do, that ought to help that your mind ought to start turning. That I, I know I need to prepare myself. I know I need to strategically prepare. I need a strategy from God. Because I know it. I know he'll write off. I mean, he's trying to steal from me. Then he ain't gonna stop with just stealing. Then he's gonna try to take you out. Steal you. Kill you. Then he's gonna, and after he's gonna stole it, done kill you, and then he's gonna try to destroy all the evidence of who you were. My God. This is oftentimes when people, when they, when they, not only when they, when they, uh, they just kill a person, they try to destroy the body because now they're trying to destroy all evidence. I don't never, the devil don't want you to know. If he, if you let the devil uh, get his hands on you, he's going to try to take you all the way out. He's not coming to play. He's not coming to just just socialize with you or play around, he's going to try to take you all the way out. And since you know he's trying to steal from you, since you know he's trying to kill you, since you know he's trying to destroy you, it's going to take more than a shower, I'm telling you now. It's going to take more than a dance. It's going to take more than a hallelujah. It's going to take more than, my God, and, 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 and you, better, you better make sure that God I need in order to be a lamp to my feet and a light to my path because I need the word to show me how to navigate how to get through this, this, this attack that he's trying to do on God's people I'm telling you I'm telling you but God is a good God church and he deserves all the praises the reward for obedience. Now listen to what Jesus said. I, I, I told you what the thief trying to do, which is uh, 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 the type of adversary, the thief. And he, he's trying to steal, he's trying to kill, he's trying to destroy, but I, I am come that you might have life, that you might have so, so in the Greek, so that you may live is that you may live and that they might have it more abundantly that I want to give you an, uh, uh, an excessive amount I want to give you an exceeding amount of life a superfluous amount of life I want to I want to give you a whole lot of life I'm telling you it's a blessing God just don't want to just bless you a little bit saint God want to bless you a whole lot that's a blessing I'm telling you that's a blessing. You don't just want to have way do something. God want to, he want to give, he want to, oh, an extreme and excessive, exceeding amount. My God, that's a blessing they're saying. So he said that they might have zo, like zo in the Greek. Live, I want them to live and that they might have it more abundant. Abundant life. Abundant life. 
Now, let's go back to Genesis now. Let's, let's can we tie some stuff in here. Abundant. The abundant. Abundant life. Because go back to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis 2 now. Let's see how abundant life applies to that in John 10 and 10. And it applies to here in the second chapter. Let's, let's look um, because there are other scriptures even in St. John 14 and 6. It's talking about I am the way, the truth, and the life. See the life life I am the way now Genesis the second chapter I want you to see something because here it deals with Adam and uh, it deals with uh, Eve but especially especially for Adam 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 listen to what he says here and the Lord God, the second chapter of Genesis and the eighth verse, and the Lord God planted a garden eastward. My goodness. And there he planted, and there he put the man whom he had formed. He had took him from the dust of the ground. And the breath and breathed his, into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. I think on last uh, uh, Wednesday when we dealt with the fact of how God will save the whole body, soul, and spirit. And when we read it over in, the, in uh, Thessalonians. Body, soul, and spirit. First Thessalonians 5 and 23. So now listen to what he says. And, and he said that in the seventh verse here. Now in the eighth verse, he planted a guard eastward in Eden. And Eden is a place of, 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 of plenty, plentiful. Greater Mount eastward in Eden. Hallelujah. Because you got to understand that this time they were in, when you study it, and I'm going I'm to get into dispensational, they was an innocent. They was not, they was not having to deal with, 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 with sin because they was in an innocent dispensation. And so they wasn't dealing with no type act activities like that. Because seeing that with them being in an innocent uh, dispensation. And so now here they were really enjoying and God wanted them to enjoy the abundance. Because only thing that changes a person enjoying abundance is their, their decisions and them choosing not to do what God instructed them to do. Because when you when, when if I choose not to follow God and I choose to be disobedient, then I'm gonna I'm gonna have to reap the consequences of my decisions. And the decisions the results of my decision, it, it, it will more than likely not be abundance. I'm going to suffer some consequences here. Because you're going to see it in here. Because here God, listen to how the Lord talk, talks here. And he's out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight. And good for food. The tree of life. Also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He put the tree of life on one side and he put the tree of knowledge of good and evil. 
and all in the midst of that surrounded the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life was all the other trees. But the thing that's so what's such a blessing is the tree of life. Because right here, the tree of life, I want you to look at that now. It points to, it points to Jesus in the New Testament. Are you hearing me? Because, because if I can eat off the tree of life, I can live forever. And so now if I continue to, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So the tree of life, I'm going to set, I'm going to set, I'm going to set abundance in your midst. But I'm also going to set the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And but but I'm gonna leave it up to you to choose. You gotta make a choice. We all had to make a choice, and we still have to make choices and choose on a daily basis, my brothers and sisters. I'm telling you now. And so now, in the midst of the tree of life, you would think that you would think that he would just only set the tree of life there, but but he also set the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Because I'm going to leave it up to you to make the choice. But I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm telling you, we serve an awesome God, saints. God will, God will, God will give you the answer. God will give you the solution. God will have everything already worked out. But then God will still leave it up to you to make the choice. And so now the my God, the tree of life, not only in this literary and type of shadows and symbolism, the tree of life, because in the midst of everything that's going on, saints, Jesus is still in the midst. In the midst of coronavirus, in the midst of sickness, in the midst of trouble, in the midst of trials, in the midst of tribulation, in the midst of storms, in the midst of ups and downs, in the midst of problems, in the midst of I don't even know if God's going to work it out. There sits Jesus. He's still in the midst, saints, I'm telling you. Oh, God, he's still in the midst. And so in the midst of every, all these trees, there was the tree of life. And that was pointing us, that was pointing us way over into the New Testament. That was pointing us into, because when the men and the prophets, when they looked, my God, they saw, they looked, but then a lot of, they didn't see everything that went down in the valleys and, the, and in the low places. My God. But they was looking. Hallelujah. And so now when we look here at the tree of life, but also in the midst of the garden and, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. My goodness. Listen to what he says. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison, and that it is it which compasses the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and, and the gold of that land is good, and there is bedellium and the orange stones, and the name of the second river is Gahan, the same as that compasses the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hadikel, that is it which goes toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. Now look what the God did. The 15th verse now. Look what he did here. And the Lord God took the man. And put him in the midst. Of plentiful. Hallelujah. He put him there. He put him in the garden of Eden. Where there was overflowing amount. Where there is plentiful. In the same similar typology here, 
as God was blessing here, God wants to bless us now. I'm telling you, church, God wants to bless us now. He wants to bless us now. And when you cross-reference these Ethiopians and, and different rivers and how they connect now, but the thing you have to look at how that it started out as one and went into four. The four. Four. Whenever you see four. The four. Oh my God. Amen. The four gospels. Amen. The four major prophets. The four. Four. The, the three Hebrew boys said the fourth man looked like the son of God. Four. It always going to reveal and show Jesus for, for. And so now he put it there. About, see, the reward for obedience. He put it there to dress it, to keep it. See, we all got a job. I'm telling you. God just didn't save you just, to, just only to get you out of sin. Now, we got a job to do, saints. Amen. We got a job to do. We got a job to do. We still got a job to do. We still, even in the midst of everything that's going on, we still got a job to do. You still got to tell people that Jesus is real, that Jesus can still save, that Jesus can still make a way. We still got a job to do. I'm telling you, give God some praise. We still got a job to do. Don't you get so discouraged and depressed and forget that God put you in the midst of abundance. But you got a job to dress it and to keep it. Because this is a sign of agriculture where you is, stuff has to be pruned. Limbs has to be cut. You know when you got a, a limb that's 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 that that's that's gonna uh, die, it has to be cut. Because if you don't cut it, it's gonna start taking nutrients. And nutrients gonna start trying to go to places that it don't need to go. Because if nutrients trying to get to a dead limb, it, it can't live nowhere, it's dead. And so now the purpose of dressing it and to keep it. So I got you in the midst of plentiful and abundance. But then look what God says also. And the Lord God commanded the man. Saying of every tree of the garden. Thou mayest freely eat. Abundance. Sign of abundance now. Because the reward for obedience is abundant life. God will give you abundance. When we follow God's instructions, when we, when we do what God say do, God will give you abundance. He said, out of all, I'm placing you in the midst of abundance. But I don't want you to forget that the tree of knowledge of good and evil is there. And you got to make a, 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 a choice too. Not to to eat off that tree. See, the 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 transgression that come from them eating the fruit, saints. It wasn't that, it wasn't that they ate. It was in the finance because they went against what God told them not to do. Amen. It wasn't so much about what they ate. And eating off the tree was the result of them being disobedient. Yes. And so now, when we think about them eating, that was the actual transgression. Yeah, that was that was leading up, and that was the result of you doing. What I told you not to do. And so when I ate off the tree, use myself, when I ate off the tree, that I, 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 see, I could have stopped if I chose not to eat off that tree. And so he 
eating off the tree. The fruit is the result of me being up in defiance and of what God told me not to do. And so I chose to do otherwise. And so now one thing about he, listen to what he tell you. Listen now in the 17th verse he's talked about. He said, you may freely eat. I'm going to put you in the midst of abundance. Because in the midst of all the tree, now when we read over in, uh, 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 go back to go back to St. John 10, because he talks now, here, here we go with that abundance now. That's why it's so critical for the abundant life. When we read St. John 10, in 10, y'all saw outcome that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And then when you read in some other places, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am so, I want to give you, I want you to live forever. I want to give you an excessive amount. I want to give you an exceeding amount. I want you to, that they might have life. So, that they may live and that they may have it more abundant. And so now back in Genesis, and God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden that thou mayest freely eat, because I'm going to place you in the midst of abundance. When you, when you do, hallelujah, when you do what God say do, God will place you in the midst of abundance, saints. My God, give him praise. I'm telling you. God will play. You will just, you will show up in the midst of abundance. How did I get there? God placed you there. What happened? God made a way. You did what he said to you. You dressed it and you kept it. You nourished it. You, 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 you was grateful and took advantage of your salvation. My God, and you nourished your life. When things needed to be cut off, you cut them off. When things needed to be grafted in, you added it in. When you needed some fertilizer, and you fertilized. The war, my God. You put yourself in a position for abundance. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's a blessing that you put yourself in the midst of abundance. And he said, the Lord commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest, thereon thou shalt surely die. Yes. Die. You got spiritual death and you got physical death. If you are oftentimes spiritually dead, it will lead to physical death. Spiritually death, spiritually, to be spiritually dead, to be separated from God. But now to be physical dead is when the spirit has been removed out of the body. This is a type of separation, but it's, you got spiritual dead, See, I can be spiritually dead and not be physically dead. Amen. Amen. Am I right? Amen. Amen. But when I'm physically dead, that's when the spirit has, has been snatched out of the body. Yes. And this is when it talks about, when you heard me talk about the ash, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Because that's when we commit the body back. See, the Lord took it. He took the fine particles of dirt and 
formed and shaped it and blowed the breath of life into it and it became a a, 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 zoe, a, 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 a living soul. Then when, the, when, when physical death takes place, we give it back to the dust because it, he has, it is amazing. <laughs> it is so awesome because he, it has, if God breathed, and then when physical death takes place, as if he inhaled. If you just want to just compare this, when you think, think about it now. He breathed into then he sucked it back out. What a mighty God we say. Good God of life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is so big that when he because so many seconds and minutes, so many people are dying. People are also being born. He's and then when they die, he's so he big enough to be able to hold it all. Because it came from him. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It came from him. And so he's big enough. He's omnipresent. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. He knows everything. He's omnipotent. He got all power. Present God can be wherever He wants to be, and so now here we go. He's so the cessation of life, and this is what He tells him that you shall surely die. The disobedience and the defiance of fallen God's instruction. It is the defining reality of the condition of humankind. It was a defining moment. He said, thou shalt surely die. Separation. My God. But I submit, my brothers, don't you let nothing cause you to be cut off from your abundance. Don't let nothing cause you. Hallelujah. Come on, give him glory. Don't let nothing. What shall separate me? What shall separate me? My God. It talks about that. Go to Romans 8. We're going to come back there. My goodness. What? What? Romans 8 and uh, 35. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Who? 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 Who shall separate us? Don't let nobody who shall separate us from the love of Christ. Shall, trouble, shall you let trials? Shall you let distresses? Or will you let persecution? It is amazing how, how the text shift right quick. You see how it starts out talking about who? And then it goes into tribulations. It shifts right quick. It goes from an individual person and then they start dealing with the types of, of events that can separate you. Tribulation can separate you. Distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. As it is written, 
For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughters. But nay, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. I still got the victory. My God, I'm still an overcomer. You got to praise him for knowing that church. Hallelujah. That God will still make a way. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't care what it look like. God still deserves to be praised. My God, we are more than conquerors. You just did. You just in the haphazardly or accidentally or coincidentally didn't get through. God got His hands on you. The devil know God got His hands on me. It may not look like it. It may not feel like it. But I can say it without a shadow of doubt. And God got his hands on me. We are more than conquerors. But it's through him that loved us. And then you got to say, for I am persuaded. I am persuaded that neither death nor life, listen to what he said, nor angels, that while we are living, while the separation, the spirit from the body nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come you don't let nothing separate you you gotta know that while I'm living God deserves to be praised and even if I'm dead God still deserves to be praised Somebody's telling thank you. I'm telling you now. I'm persuaded. Is anybody persuaded? That's why if I'm dead, God is still God. If I'm alive, God is still God. He's still God. It don't change the fact that he's God. Nor height is not too high. Nor depth not too deep nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord hallelujah now go back to Genesis now my God abundant life don't you cut your don't you let yourself get cut off from abundance abundant abundant healing abundant deliverance Abundance of joy, abundance of peace, abundance of grace, abundance of mercy, abundance of love, abundance of time, abundance of ways of escape, abundance of everything that you need. For God be the glory. That's the reward. That's the reward. That's the reward that God going to give you. Not about the fruit, eating the fruit, the actual, but it was the fact that they disobeyed God. Yeah. Hallelujah. If you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the, the good of the land. Amen. I'm telling you now. And so, God is our subject. Now let's jump to the third chapter right quick. I'm gonna skip, we're gonna skip. We know that he made. See, this was speaking to the man. Now he took a reel from Adam and made one man. Hallelujah. This is now bones of my bone. Help me someone suitable. This is Brother Dunnis and uh, that is the son that got married. He, he got him to help me. Someone suitable. Suitable. And you all became one flesh. One flesh. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave. You cleave into her now. I'm cleaving to Veronica. Because we are now one flesh. She did something to my structure. Yes. 
put her back in my side. Yeah. Hallelujah. Not in front, not in behind, but God placed her on her side. And this is why, bro, friends, when you put your hand around Sister Fran, you just put, making sure she's in the right place. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We call God the real. It's in here. My God. What about it? God, we serve. God, be the glory. Now, check this out. I want you to see something here because now you have to look at it. You have to not only look at it because what this, what this points us, the tree of life points us and shows us Jesus. That's all it's doing is showing us Jesus. That's all it done. He got a, he got right where, way back here is showing us Jesus. And even when you read the third chapter, the 15th verse, it, that is pointing to the Messiah. But now check this out. They are still in innocence. But now, now the third chapter in the first verse, now the serpent was more subtle. He was more crafty, he was more slick than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, as God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Separation. See, separation. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Now, right there is a, 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 a very, I would say, pivotal, because it really, because one of the things that she's doing is listening. To a snake. <laughs> Don't spend your time listening to a snake. Snakes. You notice how a snake tongue. What what is it about? It? A snake got two split. Don't spend your time listening to folks that talk out of both sides of their mouth. Those are snakes. They say one thing this moment, then the next moment they saying something else. That's a snake. And I'm not necessarily, but that is, I'm speaking more so of a spirit when it comes to humanity. And why are you spending your time listening to a snake? They talk out of both sides. Be careful. Now, when they did this, and God does know in the day that thou eatest thereof, then your eyes shall be open. See, now they are in, they are already in innocent dispensation. Now, through the fall of mankind, it moved them from innocent to conscience. We're gonna we'll teach them that. We'll, we'll, we're gonna only be looking at that. Because see, before they was in an innocent. And they didn't even know. They didn't, if you read back in the second chapter, they didn't even know that they were walking around naked with no clothes on. They was not aware of it until they became conscious. So they moved from innocent to conscious. But that was through the fall because they was in defiance and disobeying God's command. Whenever you disobey God, it's going to take you into a place where God didn't want you to go. This is not where God wanted them to end up, but God knew that this would happen. When it comes to disobedience. Because when you disobey God, you will end up somewhere you didn't even intend to be. Amen. I didn't want to do it, but I'm in the finance. I'm in this place because.
because I'm disobedient. How did you get there? I didn't do what God instructed me to do. And so when they did this, it was the fall. They moved. Their eyes were open. Now they begin to realize they were without. They moved from innocent to conscience. The fall of man changed. And so innocent, you got innocent, conscience, you were government, promise, law. And each one of them. And even where we are today, grace, grace, the church and grace, something got to happen to move up, move to the next dispensation. Amen. We're going we're gonna to be, we're going to get into that. We're gonna, I feel like after this, Lesson class here. We're going to get, we're going to shift and just and stay with dispensation teaching and see what got going to happen to move us to the next dispensation. Because the fall of man caused them to move from innocent to conscience. And this is where they are. The eyes of them were both old, and they knew that they were without, naked, see, without. No clothes, without. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves apron. See, the fig leaves are, are, are really symbolizing deception and deceit. Because when Jesus saw the fig tree, he thought some fruit was on it. Because they had the leaf. So it was a sign of deception. So now putting the fig leaves on is a sign of deception because it appears to be look like I, I am something that I'm not. Hallelujah. And so when they put the fig leaves on it was deception. And God shows up. Adam started making an excuse. Yeah. Who told you he was making it? Then you want to start blaming the why. Anytime, anytime, we always want to use somebody as a scapegoat. Then he talked about that woman you gave me. Then she talked about that serpent got me. Now she were the sea. Adam was not the sea. He were the sea. <laughs> But Adam were not the sea. <laughs> now, whenever, now check this out. Whenever you are, now, now you see, now I'm going to read the, and I know almost I skipped through this third chapter, and I want you to see, I'm going to read the 15th verse, and I'm going to read the 24th. Now, well, the 21st too, I'm going to read them, but you go back and read this entire chapter. Now the 15, he says, the third chapter, we see that they they start talking about when God heard the voice of the Lord coming through the cool of the day and when they talking to God. And now the 15, he already cursing the, the serpent. That's why he crawled on his belly. Now he said, I will put entity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. This is time when you talk, you see. It talks about a woman having a seed. And it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And so what this was showing us, the Messiah, the coming of the Messiah, the punishment, the what he would what he would go through. My God. And how he would triumph over evil. He would suffer. Persecute. My goodness. And this was talking about, all this was talking about was just Jesus. Because a woman don't have a seed. It is the man that has the seed. Amen. Now, listen to what Adam said. Unto Adam and also to his wife did the Lord make coats of skins and clothe them. Now, blood will never sin. The blood 
made the, the blood atonement. And so this is where the innocent, here go again, it shows us Jesus as an innocent sacrifice. Coats of skin. So they had to get it from an animal. Blood had to be shed for sin. Now, the 24th verse. Listen at what he did. We know that he cursed the woman, the man, and, and, and he told the man, in the sweat of thy bride, thorns and thistles came about, and even in uh, in uh, conception and in, in sorrow, thou shalt bring children of labor pains and, and the different things that happen to women. The pains and cycles and pain during painful times, especially during birthing. You read in the 16th verse, you'll see that. In sorrow shall thou bring forth children. Then it talks about and thy desire shall be to thy health. He told, he told what he's gonna do to the serpent. He told him for the woman, for the man, and even for the even for the land he cursed it. Thorns also and thistles in the 18th verse shall they bring forth. So man, the sweat of thy bride. He talks about the man. You gotta go to work. Oh, I'm a man. You laying up at home. I'm a man. Go to work. <laughs> but I'm a man. <laughs> now the 24th, listen now here. Now the 24th, so he drove out the man. And he placed east at the east of the garden of Eden. Shepherds and a flaming sword. Which turns every way to keep the way of the tree of life. And even though here it still showed us that the sword was turning north, east, west, and south, that good news would eventually come through the Messiah to get them back in. Because it was Jesus. that come from Eden with dying garments on. He traded the wine press all by himself. He took the abuse. And so what we see here that they move from abundance. Whenever you are in the finance and whenever you start disobeying God God's reaction and God's response to you is different. He drove out the man. He moved them out of a place of plentiful. But it would be, hallelujah, it would be through Jesus that man could be able to get back there. Somebody give God some praise. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! It was Jesus. And this is why when you see the tree of, the tree of life, it's showing us Jesus. And then when we read in the New Testament, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Because here, man got moved from abundance. But then Jesus came along in the likeness of sinful flesh, took the abuse. He died that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. So one, the first Adam got us out. But the second Adam got us back in. The first Adam was from the earth. But the second Adam was from the heavens. Somebody give God some praise. Oh, to God be the glory. Somebody praise him for abundance. Somebody shout abundance. Abundance. I love you, sisters. I love you and I pray God's blessings upon you. Amen. Love you so dearly. You that are listening and watching, I speak blessings into your life. The reward for obedience is abundant life. And God has placed us in the midst of it. Don't you do nothing to lose that opportunity. Because it's one of the greatest opportunities that you can have. That God will nourish his folks. That God will deliver somebody. That God will help somebody. That God can make a way out of nowhere. Love you. Give it glory. You at a home praising. You ought to praise him. You ought to be praising him for abundant life. Hallelujah.
In Jesus' name. We love you. We're praying for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.